Greetings from Thagama, and I hope you're doing well today. We are about 75 days after the COVID-19 landed in our part of the world, and we were in confinement for so many weeks. Now it's a different story outside. We have much more liberty. The news said yesterday 40,000 movements of vehicles uh, were more than more than had been yesterday. So people are getting out and visiting and shopping and however, one of the most common topics out there are masks and gloves. I went to the store yesterday, I had my mask and my glove and we have to wear the masks in any public place and even outside if it's in a tight tight area where there's a lot of people. And my goodness, it's an amazing thing to see so many people with protection devices. And so my challenge today is titled, Our Shield or Your Shield, as a, as a believer. The words that I'm going to read in just a minute were written almost, four, or spoken almost 4,000 years ago. But who cares? They're eternal words. The truth is eternal and has a powerful, a powerful meaning or powerful re uh, relevancy for us today. So I'm going to read out of Genesis chapter 15, verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Wow, what powerful words. And they came to a man who needed a shield, and he needed some reassurance that God had not forgotten him and that the promises God had given him were going to happen. The first verses in that, or the first words in that verse are, after these things, what had happened? Well, immediately before that, in, at least in the scriptural context, was the war between nine kings and Lot was mixed up in that and ended up being taken captive and Abram with 300 of his men went on this daring rescue mission. If you trace it, it's an amazing trip that they made and they recovered everything. But, but Abram had some fears and so the first words that came to him from God after that event were, fear not. I am your shield. And so let's talk about that a little bit. First of all, God does not hand out shields to his children. At least not visible ones. Uh, nor does he give them as a prize to favorite, favorite servants of his. He doesn't give us any physical or visible guard against Satan, or adverse circumstances. His plan for our safety, as we see here clearly and throughout Scripture, is much more personal and much more reliable. He wants to be our shield. He himself. The psalmist said in Psalm 28, 7, The Lord is my strength, and my shield. Some beautiful songs written on this verse. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth and with my song will I praise him. So this truth was very important to David and of course it became extremely important to Abram as well. However, it's radically different than what we often believe in our modern era. Because we have drunk deeply from the world's wells and the world's philosophy. It's almost a foreign concept. The idea of actually trusting God for our basic everyday protection. Remember, masks and the, the concept of actually trusting in God for our protection is rare. Now, it's true that we often will pray before a trip uh, or a job project, 
but generally we, we, we feel naked and very vulnerable if we haven't surrounded ourselves with everything that our culture says we need to have in terms of safeguards against evil people or evil situations. So we, we get all these electronic devices, we have guarantees, we have insurances, and um, watertight contracts. And we, we think that by getting all of these things, we're going to be able to walk through life undisturbed. But that's not the way it works out. <laughs> um, because we know that for every alarm system out there, every security device, there are people working around the clock making big money to get around those devices. And so, as I often found years ago when I did track distribution, the many times the most unpleasant people in the world were those in high-end neighborhoods that had all of the fancy, rich stuff. They were all enclosed and they were upset with people bothering them and coming close to their things. Because in the end, all of those protections really don't give us peace of mind. And during the, during the whole while, God is telling us in the scriptures, throughout the entire Bible, he's saying, I have a better plan. I have a much better plan for your protection. King David learned about it. He learned about it early on as a young boy, as he fought lions and bears and giants. What was the lesson? He learned that uh, being where the master wanted him to be, being in the right place, and doing the right thing. In other words, being in God's will is the way we would say it today. Being in, God, being in God's will were the main conditions for divine protection. Doing and being what God wanted you to do and where he wanted you to be. And uh, this became such a foundational truth for him that he, it comes up over and over again in his psalms. And these psalms became the instruction for his descendants, both physical descendants, Israel, and phys uh, spiritual descendants, who we are. About 300 years later, 300 years after David, there's a king, one of his descendants, called Hezekiah. And uh, you have the story in 2 Kings 19. You've probably read it many times. But by the end of the story, because of the king's faith and, and the faith of the people, 185,000 soldiers are dead, silent witnesses to God's ability to protect, to shield his people when he wants to. Then if you jump over to the New Testament... You find this in every major character in most of, the, most of the books of the New Testament. You find this idea as well. Start with the Great Commission, for example. It starts and it ends with the promise of the Lord Jesus' personal presence, his almighty authority, and his ability to shield and protect his people that are giving out the gospel to the ends of the world and to the end of time. That... I will be with you. That's the, that's the, I will be your shield. You go to, the, to Paul, one of the main characters, and there are so many examples of that, but when he was in Corinth, uh, Corinth, the Lord interrupted his dreams one night or his sleep one night and basically said, uh, do, be not afraid, just speak, and don't hold your feet because I am with you. And Paul went on to have 18 months of very fruitful ministry. Now I'm not trying I'm not trying to say that we need to throw out all the locks, all the insurance policies, all the guarantees, all the modern things that our culture has. But I do want us to really really think through who or what is our trust in. Who do we really believe is shielding us from evil, from danger? Why do we find this truth so hard to apply to our ordinary daily walk? 
There is only one answer of why it's so hard for us. And it's embarrassingly simple. Well, it's simple and it's embarrassing, both. And it is our unbelief. It's our unbelief. And it taints everything we think and everything we do. We have, as believers, we have to continually fight against, ask God for grace to, to destroy within us that root of unbelief. So, final observation. God says, let me be your shield. I want to be your shield. But we say, yeah, but just in case, I'm going to spend this money and buy this and do this. and Well, that's the way we do it. But ironically, we, we, when we don't take God at his word and don't learn to trust him literally, we lose out on so much because he's offering much more than just protection in this promise. We can see it, even in Psalm 28. He's offering, first of all, what is he offering, Abram? He's offering his presence. I am your shield. I am your great reward. I am your inheritance. He's offering to us his presence. But then the psalmist says, there, I'm rejoicing because I've trusted him. I'm rejoicing and there's a song in my heart and he gives us joy and peace and happiness. All of that if we will believe that he is our shield. So let's do some hard thinking, especially in this time of COVID-19. We didn't even know what that was five months ago. Wasn't even a word, a concept. My, has our world ever changed? But the basic concept or need for protection and uh, being careful and, and having... Having safeguards, that hasn't changed. We still need that. Abraham needed that. And so God gives us the answer. Okay, let's pray. Dear Father, help me believe. At times I get the idea that this age is different and somehow your principles don't apply. Give me the simple faith to take you at your word. Amen. Amen.